<laughs> You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> I'm about as ready for the Edinburgh Festival as fucking Norad was ready for rogue planes. Aye, basically I'm not very ready at all, you can. In fact, I've only ever performed one gig in the last year. And that was at a friend's birthday party and 80% of the audience couldn't even speak English. No. So I went to like a lead bloom. I can assure you, it wasn't a very confidence building at all. So I'm not ready in the slightest. I've only ever done about seven gigs in my life, if truth be told. In 2006, I uh, started on the comedy scene. I entered a, did a few gigs, I entered a comedy competition. The promoter, uh, I go into a little dispute with the promoter, I ended up having a big fight with them on the stage. And that kind of put an end to my non-existent comedy career right there and then. So I took my wife and my son uh, and uh, we moved to Turkey. I've been living here for five years. Uh, in the meantime, I, I still had this dream I'm going to be a comedy superstar. So I started putting a website together and I've been working on that the past wee while. And as part of the website, uh, I says, oh well, I better pretend I'm a comedian, I better uh, do some live gigs or else I'm going to quickly run out of the videos for the live gigs section. So I booked myself in to do the Fringe and then somehow I got into Peter Buckley Hill's free Fringe kind of part and uh, now I've got a show to perform and uh, I'm a little bit worried, you know, because what's the point of having a website if you're about as funny as cancer, you can? <laughs> uh, didn't get me wrong, I've got, you, can, you see, maybe you say that's not politically correct, saying that my wife had cancer, by the way, right? And I can assure you it's not very funny. Although, on the plus side, I did enjoy trying on our wigs from time to time. That was pretty cool. But anyway, that's the long and short of it. I've got two weeks to get the show together, or else I'm up Ship Creek without a paddle. So, I have been to the Fringe before, but I've not done my own show before. You see, especially since I've come here, what happens is every August, I go back to Edinburgh for the festival, aye, because it gets a bit hot here in Turkey, plus 40, and that's no good for a Scotsman with skin as white as mine, basically, you can. So I'm basically the only person that goes to Edinburgh every year for the weather. But this year, because you kind of pisses down there, you can't go off the plane in Glasgow, it's like, yippee, yippee, I'm home, I'm home, give me some rain. Everyone else walks around miserable as fuck, as, the, as they say, miserable as fuck, you can. But I'm quite happy in the rain. Although after a month here it does wear you doing a bit again. But anyway, uh, I go back there and uh, usually every year I've got a few contacts still in the comedy circuit so they give me the odd op open spot here and there. But I didn't ever get invited back, that's the problem, because they want me to pay for the damages. And I refuse to do that because I didn't tell the punters to riot. That just usually happens of its own accord, you can. And my insurance bill doesn't cover that. My insurance policy, that my non-existence insurance policy, doesn't cover that. So this year I've decided to do my own show, and I've brought my own curtains and everything. So when the Rotten Tomatoes hit the curtains, nobody can complain about not being able to get the stains out. Uh, aye, my show, my show. Five words to describe my show. Well, as I didn't ken what my show's going to be, because uh, this is a kind of like, you know, kind of winging it, so hopefully my show will be inspired. I would like it, I'll, it has to, I want it to be inspired, because I'm going to go on stage and it just, it's going to have to come out me somehow, so let's hope I've got some inspiration. Inspired, word number one. Word number two, cathartic. I like to do a cathartic show, because I like ranting about shit, do you ken? In fact, I might just shout out to the audience, Tell me something you want to rant about, and they can rest assured I'll have fucking plenty to say in the subject. As long as it's not news based, you know, because I didn't watch the fucking news. I've outgrown that a long time ago, because I prefer keeping my reality quite a positive one, and I didn't see the point of drip feeding myself fucking negativity for more than one minute a day, far less sitting down for 30 minutes in news every night, as large parts of the population still do. So if you do do that, I'll grab you by the fucking neck and I'll fucking rattle the shit out of you and it'll be a cathartic release, you okay? So that's two, Shambhala, cathartic. Third word. Uh, treacherous, treacherous. It could be treacherous, especially for myself, because I've got a tendency to speak my mind. Aye, I don't really filter what comes through the cosmos, it just kind of comes out and some people take it the wrong way, you can? Okay? Because sometimes there isn't a punchline and it's just kind of pure hatred. 
and people at a comedy show expect a bit of relief now and again and after 15 minutes of this they say Jesus Christ I wish you went to see Jerry Sadowich so treacherous because I sometimes get a few things thrown at me I've dodged the odd bottle in my time shall we say what would be the next word? Uh, insane? pretty insane because uh, for instance I've done this gig at my friend's birthday party a couple of weeks ago there and uh, I thought I was singing quite normal, but after that everyone came up to me and told me I was crazy, you can? Because I was singing about salty cum and uh, all kinds of other pornographic... Uh, well, it's actually real, you know, people use these words, they're quite legitimate words. But because I rearranged them in a certain order, apparently it was quite pornographic. And uh, people told me I was crazy, so I'm guessing my show is going to be insane. And what's the other one? What's it? Shambolic. I think shambolic could be the other one. A bit like this fucking video recording, you get It's a bit shambolic, so I dare say my show's going to be like that because I've not got a clue what order I'm going to start, how it's all going to work out. I dare say it'll be different every day because there's no way I can remember a 50 minute script offhand if you start to finish, especially when I've only got two weeks left to write it. Uh, never mind rehearse it, so. I dare say it's going to be a bit shambolic and hopefully as the, the month progresses it'll start to come together somehow God knows how basically but we can all get down on our knees and pray for that yet. Ah, what can you expect from my show? What can you expect? Well, this is quite a good question because this might help me focus a bit. What can you expect? I think you know, I'll basically just do what I usually do, just go on stage and start talking pish and take it from there basically, you can. And when there's a bit of a lull in the laughter, I'll try and remember some of the material that I've wrote or used to say in the past, I'll try and dig that up from somewhere and chuck it out there and then if the, when that doesn't work I'll try and stick in a poem in, a funny poem or a funny song or even a serious song or even if there aren't any, any students in, I might even try and be philosophical poem, you can. I didn't want any students to be there, just in case you can. I didn't want to melt their poor wee conditioned brains, you can. I'll, I'll keep them in a wee safety bubble. We'll talk about sex and sucking cock for the students that are there, you can. Mind you, some students are quite intelligent, uh, so maybe I could read a bit of Shakespeare for them. Read the great Gatsby. I believe that goes down well in student circles. Well, at least. What was his name? Andy Kaufman thought so, so. I'm on the same kind of wavelength as him. So The Great Gatsby or Shakespeare of you, if you feel like uh, you'd like to hear a particular novel yourself, then give me a suggestion. Who knows? This show is uh, flying by the seat of his pants, in case you haven't figured that you know by now. How do I write my show? Well, it's a good question. It's a good question. I used to write my show in the seven or eight gigs I've done before. I basically wrote some material for the first gig, I went on stage, I blagged when I was on stage because I forgot the material I had written down and then the stuff I blagged about kind of got myself through the gig I then went home and wrote that down and then that became material then I went on the stage a second time and then I went on stage and blagged some more shit and then I went home and wrote that down so I tend to write most of the material when I'm on stage and uh, I'm basically shitting myself so that's because that's what inspires me basically, fear of making a tall tit of myself that's my biggest inspiration uh, closely followed by my bank account. Aye, my bank balance really inspires me because uh, it's going down like fucking that right now and it's not taking any blips up at all. Not even a tiny one. Not even a tiny blip. For the past four years I've heard practically fuck all. Aye. I've had to sell property. I had the wee bit of money invested, I sold the property and I'm living off the savings because I can't get a real job. So this is basically what's inspiring this whole Edinburgh Festival fiasco. If it goes alright, superstardom. If it doesn't, destitute on the streets. I'm an all or nothing type geezer. Uh, is this a rhetorical question? It's free, isn't it? Is that no good enough? <laughs> you know, seriously though, seriously. As a performer, I would rather pay nothing than fork out thousands of pounds to the large evil venues, you can? Uh, especially when most of my gigs could be held inside of a phone box. So what's the point of getting myself 10 grand in debt to try and make money back on non-existent ticket sales? Non-existent seems to be the theme 
of this interview so far, you know. Hopefully my show's not going to be non-existent and I do actually manage to get there despite this lack of quality. At least if I do this show then I can say I've done it. And then my conscience will be clear. But do I want my audience to take for the show? Huh. Well, hopefully none. You can, because I think I signed some kind of contract there that says I'm liable for any equipment or furniture loss or damage, you can, so I would rather the audience took nothing from my show. On the other hand though, if they day want to leave something, I will be coming in with my tartan tammy at the end of the show for a small collection, you can. I'm loath, I, I don't like charity, I don't like charity collectors. But I'm not against actually taking any myself, I'm a bit of a hypocrite that way. So, I also accept direct debit as well, so bring your Visa cards if you come along. Well, basically, do everything that I did today. Hi, it's as simple as that. Write your material long beforehand. Rehearse the crap out of it. Go around various parts of the country performing your material and adjusting it to tweak it all the time to make it even more last per minute than is humanly possible. And just keep doing that and tell every audience that they're the greatest things that sliced bread and they're all beautiful, you know, throw roses at them at the end of the gig. And then do that so often that you can do it blindfolded, back, standing on your head in your sleep and still receive a standing ovation. That's what you need to do if you're bringing a show to the Edinburgh Fringe. And one thing you didn't need to do, unless it's absolutely necessary, is stick your cock in a bricklayer's pint. I didn't recommend that. I've tried it myself a couple of times, and it always ends in trouble. So, that's basically it. That's been my interview. I'd like to thank uh, the kind people on the website for giving me this opportunity to put my name out there. And if I see any of you at the show, I'd be delighted if you bought me a pint regardless of how good I actually am. Uh, if I'm really shit, I don't again, I'll offer you some of my crisps at the end of the gig, because that'll be my lunch that day, because you'll not put anything in the fucking bucket. Alright, thanks for listening, and cheers to the Bye bye.